Hi, this is Jody Spizer at Loyola University Medical Center. Welcome to our mini video tutorial for our online dermatopathology review. Today we will be discussing the psoriasiform and spongiotic dermatitis differential diagnosis. A couple of disclaimers before we start. Obviously, when you're looking at anything under the microscope for DermPath, you always want to make sure that you get your histologic differential diagnosis um, use clues to lead you to the right diagnosis and then make sure that that correlates with what they're seeing clinically. So for the remainder of this tutorial we will really just be discussing the characteristic histologic findings of these different uh, disease states. Additionally, while this may be an oversimplified view, I think for the purposes of more straightforward cases, as well as for a board's review, I think that this will provide you with good clues to lead you down the right differential diagnosis. Having said that, when you get a case, you always want to start at low power to determine the major tissue reaction pattern that you're seeing. If you're seeing predominantly a spongiotic pattern, which is caused by when the in inflammatory cells go up into the epidermis, they release cytokines and cause edema that causes the spongiotic pattern. If you're seeing spongiosis and then you look at the dermis and you're seeing a lot of eosinophils, you want to think of more of an eczematous process, being an allergic contact dermatitis, numular dermatitis, etc. Additionally, we can give an idea of how long that lesion has been there by a combination of two things. One, how much spongiosis is present, and two, looking at the stratum corneum. If we have a lot of spongiosis along with a basket weave stratum corneum, which is what we see in normal skin, that would be indicative of a more acute process because it hasn't been going on long enough to change the stratum corneum. If you have a moderate degree of spongiosis in conjunction with serum in the stratum corneum, that's what we would call more of a subacute process. As the process goes on, the spongiosis gets less and it becomes more of a psoriasiform pattern. That, along with perikeratosis, would give you an idea that it's more of a chronic process, that it's been going on for a long time. If, from a medium power view, you're seeing mounds of perikeratosis, you would want to think of a pityriasis rosea. If you see erythrocyte extravasation and hemocytorin deposits within the dermis, as well as a proliferation of papillary dermal capillaries, you would want to think of a stasis dermatitis. And if you're seeing a spongiotic pattern without these other clues, take a really good look at the stratum corneum, and if you see what we call spaghetti and meatballs, or fungus that is sitting in the stratum corneum, that would be indicative of a tinea. You don't necessarily need a PAS stain for this. They can be seen on H&E, although a PAS stain would certainly highlight it further. If you look at the slide from low power and you're seeing more of a psoriasiform hyperplasia, you want to go down a slightly different differential diagnosis. If you're seeing a loose perikeratosis with neutrophils with either within the corneum or within the epidermis, along with loss of a granular layer and regular acanthosis, you would think of psoriasis. If you see a compact hyperkeratosis with focal perikeratosis and lymphocytes as opposed to neutrophils, especially if they're atypical, you definitely want to think about mycosis fungoides. If you see a checkerboard pattern of ortho and perikeratosis both in the horizontal and vertical planes, you would want to think of pityriasis rubra pilaris. If you see elongated thin reedy ridges with plasma cells, you would think of syphilis. If you see hyperkeratosis with the stratum lucidum or the hairy palm sign along with irregular acanthosis and papillary dermal fibrosis, you would want to think of like in simplex chronicus. Just a note, the hairy palm sign is something that we say in germ path. If you think about the skin on palms and soles in a normal individual, that's an area of the body that's subject to a lot more stresses. Because of that, the skin is much more thick, and that is why we see the stratum lucidum. Similarly, in process, processes like LSC, the lesion is being subjected to more stress, therefore you're getting 
um, thicker skin in that area and you will also have a stratum lucidum. But in contrast to your palms and soles, the rest of your body has hair follicles. So if you see hair follicles with something that looks like acral skin, then we call that the hairy palm sign. Lastly, if you have psoriasiform hyperplasia and you see eosinophils but a retained granular layer, you also want to think about chronic spongi spongiotic dermatitis, which can be either in the spongiotic or the psoriasiform. Starting with our first case, this one's a little bit tricky. From low power, we see a predominantly psoriasiform pattern. However, when we look at it on higher power, we can see that there's a perikeratosis on the top. We have a retained granular layer. We have mild uh, spongiosis here, which you can see with the little white lines in between the keratinocytes. That's just basically because the edema is in the epidermis and kind of pulling the keratinocytes apart. And then we have an inflammatory infiltrate with eosinophils. So all of these things taken together would give you a chronic spongiotic dermatitis. Our next case, what we see is a hyperkeratosis with acanthosis. When we look at it on higher power, we see that it's a perikeratotic scale. And then we see areas of very prominent hypergranulosis with this more irregular acanthosis. Also, either from lower power, excuse, lower power or higher power, what we see is in the dermis in between the reedy ridges, which is the papillary dermis, we see that it's a very dark pink, both here and here. And this is a papillary dermal fibrosis. All these things taken together will give you a diagnosis of lichen simplex chronicus. On our next case, what we see is a scale we see that there's hyperkeratosis, not a whole lot going on in the epidermis, and maybe just a sparse perivascular infiltrate in the dermis. And the hyperkeratosis does seem to be centered around a hair follicle. When we look at it on a more medium power view, what we see is that there's alternating perikeratosis and orthokeratosis. And we're seeing that it's both in the horizontal plane, para, ortho, para, ortho, as well as in the vertical plane, para, ortho, para. This is what we call the checkerboard pattern of ortho and perikeratosis that we see in pityriasis rubopilaris. In our last case, from low power, we see a psoriasiform hyperplasia, and what we see is sort of a loose hyperkeratotic scale. And we always like to say that this reminds us of the upper layer of baklava, because pathologists always like to compare everything to food. When we look at, so on medium power, we are seeing the loose perikeratosis and some very obvious neutrophil deposition. And this is what we call Munro microabscess, just meaning that there are neutrophils within the, the corneal layer. Um, we're also seeing loss of the granular layer we're seeing a regular acanthosis, and then we're also seeing dilated capillaries in the papillary dermis. Overlying these dilated capillaries, although not seen in this section, you can have thinning of the suprapapillary plate of the epidermis. This is what leads to ospit sign, which is the appearance of punctate bleeding spots when psoriasis scales are scraped off. This happens because there's thinning of the epidermal layer overlying the tips of the dermal papillae, and these dilated bl blood vessels are dilated and tortuous, so they bleed easily when the scale is removed. So taken all together, uh, this would lead to a diagnosis of psoriasis. Thank you for listening to our mini lecture on the psoriasiform and spongiotic dermatitis differential diagnosis. I hope this was helpful and can lead you with some um, good clues to leading you down the right path when you get good cases that come past your microscope. Thank you.